My name is Paul Chan and I'm from, from the School of Mechanical Aerospace and Civil Engineering. Um, I did start out life as uh, playing with bulldozers and stuff. Um, and it's quite interesting that I'm now studying social relations in construction engineering context. Anyway, this is, um, I thought since from engineering I'll have a PowerPoint presentation, but I'm not going to kind of rely on the slides uh, too much. Um, that's the title of uh, my talk today. Can we really value uh, social responsibility particularly in what uh, is a turbulent world that we live in today. So I'm going to start off with a grand challenge, um, and I'm going to talk a bit about this grand challenge and the project that I'm involved uh, with, um, Vivian Liang over there. Um, and the grand challenge was this. How can we increase air travel and reduce carbon emissions at the same time, simultaneously? And this was a question that was posed by EPSRC in 2008, when they organized this sandpit event to get researchers to battle with one another to try to get research money. And basically, they were kind of uh, picking up on ideas to kind of see whether we can kind of answer this question. Anyway, just to focus on this grand challenge for a bit, inherent within this question um, is that air travel is a good thing and carbon emissions is a bad thing. Um, and actually, the research council staff were all involved with the energy program. And there were stakeholders there who were kind of evaluating our thoughts and actions. Um, it's quite interesting to kind of note who the stakeholders were. There were airports there. There were airline, no, not airlines, but aircraft engine manufacturers. But interestingly, there was nobody from environmental activism. Okay? And airlines were also excluded from the conversations, which is quite interesting. Because the boundaries of the airport were confined, or the aviation sector was confined to anything within the airport infrastructure. We spent three days actually defining what an airport is. Uh, and we concluded actually that an airport starts when the passengers get in to the airport, uh, to the point where the aircraft leaves the aero bridge, and from the point when the aircraft lands on the runway. You can see it's really complicated. Uh, so the time it takes for the aircraft to get from the aero bridge to the runway is not included in the airport, which I find quite bizarre. Anyway, um, but here there is actually an inherent value in terms of what the research funders were looking for, and that there is this uh, tacit acknowledgement that there is this um, economic. We have to demonstrate economic value in any of the solutions that we're trying to come up with, whether that's immediate in the long term, implicit or articulated. Anyway, so the project that we got funded deals with what is now a popular phrase called the triple bottom line of economic, social, and environmental. And the whole idea is we wanted to try to understand how airport operators make decisions when they invest in sustainable technologies. With UCL, they were doing financial modeling, and we've also got an environmental expert uh, in aviation from Cambridge. Uh, as I've mentioned, I started out as a construction engineering kind of uh, person, and now I'm studying social relations, so I'm really interested in looking at decision-making processes and the sort of social political dynamics in there. Um, the sort of research methods that we adopted um, is rather ethnographic. So we have Vivian actually based um, in the environmental department, and she's doing participant observations, uh, semi-structured interviews, and also archival analysis. So I'm going to present to you two stories, really, uh, from the research to kind of throw up some uh, research challenges and questions that we are still trying to grapple with. So, uh, but before that, let's talk a bit about value, because I think given the afternoon session, uh, I think the definition of value is quite in order. If you look at this definition taken from the Oxford English Dictionary, you can see that value is synonymous with the notion of worth. Uh, so something that's valuable is actually important and useful. And of course, coming from an engineering school, it's also quite useful that there is some idea of a numerical amount. Okay? But apart from enumerating what value is, the dictionary does acknowledge some sense of judgment. So there's judgment over there. And so this invokes a sense of individual discretion. So I think that's quite important to kind of bear in mind. Value is also quite tentative and provisional, um, as marked by terms like compare, estimate, and also throughout life. So I think perhaps we might want to bear in mind some of these keywords um, as I talk you through the two stories. Um, and 
I think it's important to realize that um, in the context of these two stories I'm going to tell you, um, that a lot of organizational and management scholars have uh, realized that organizations are no longer coherent. Okay? So the old school of thought actually suggests that organizations are uh, in the state of being organized. And I think right now, there is actually greater purchase in trying to understand how organizations are in the constant flux of becoming organized. And I think that's important. Because when we talk about the triple bottom line, um, the project was really interested in looking at how decision makers do trade-offs. And when we do trade-offs, we seem to assume that we are trading off what is coherent concepts. And what I would li like to argue is that what are economic, social and environmental concerns are actually incoherent and rather inconsistent. So if you bear that in mind and the sort of tentative provisional nature of value, um, let's begin with the two stories. So the first story, the first story re relates to the recruitment of an environmental engineer. Okay? Uh, this is an airport. In the uh, mid-1990s, they were trying to expand in its operations. So air travel is a good thing. They want to kind of in increase on that. And um, they wanted to build a new runway as part of this uh, process. Um, there was lots of uh, controversy around uh, the ecological uh, disaster. So they actually employed an environmental manager with an ecology background uh, to kind of deliver this environmental mitigation package. Okay? Now, this environmental mitigation package was really perceived by the organization, okay, by airport management, to be uh, there to quell opposition against uh, the building of the new runway, rather than necessarily driven by the sort of environmental concerns. Okay? Now, what's interesting, of course, is that nobody actually knows what the environmental department does. right? Uh, and so a lot of the time, they were left to their own devices. right? Uh, they think it's a good thing because they can get the wrong way through. Uh, but at the same time, they're not quite sure, so we'll just leave, leave, leave it up to you to get on with it. And what we have observed, actually, and actually it's Vivian's observations, and uh, through the supervision sessions, we kind of uh, have a lot of discussions. Um, but through Vivian's observations, uh, what we gathered was the environmental department is rather insecure. They keep trying to justify their existence. So can you tell me how much is it worth the sort of stuff that I did in the mid-1990s, how much financial savings have I made for the airport? So this was a kind of fundamental question that they were kind of rather perplexed about. So this demonstrates to me that when you do social responsibility now, you very often do not know the value of what you're doing now, let alone the value of what you're going to do now for the future. So I think that's quite an interesting story in its own right. The second story is about bins. Rubbish is a big problem, okay, because of space constraints in the airport. Okay, so they don't really want to store lots of rubbish because of um, the implications for landfill. So they want to encourage recycling in the airport. So they, they thought, right, let's buy recycling bins. And originally framed as an environmental problem, the request for purchasing of bins was turned down. That's interesting. Uh, it was put through a second time round, only this time it was integrated within the sort of budgeting request for the operations department, and it went through. So this demonstrates again this whole idea that organizations are really rather incoherent, inconsistent, and it's in a constant flux of becoming organized. And actually there are groups and subgroups within this airport organization that are either collaborating, cooperating, or competing with one another for scarce resources. And I think that's something that we need to bear in mind in there. Okay, so I'm just going to conclude now with a couple of questions that I have in terms of uh, the value of what we do uh, and also the sort of value from the research. So um, before I go to that concluding uh, note, it's worth to note that the definition that we're using for decision making is that when you make a decision, you're making a commitment to act in the future. So if you bear that in mind, it's quite uh, important. You're making a commitment to act in the future. Um, and actually what's in interesting is in our research methods, we are talking to and we are seeing individuals making decisions. So the question that we have, um, of course, is 
how can we actually aggregate these actions and the whole value propositions and the sort of uh, struggles and the sort of uh, competition with one another? How do we aggregate from the individual level to a group level and organisational level? So I think that's one question that we are still rather uh, perplexed by. But we have certainly observed lots of game playing in here, and I think game playing is actually quite a fertile area to kind of study these dynamics. Um, okay, so in terms of uh, concluding with some questions, here's a number of questions that we uh, would like to ask. So the first thing is how, I mean, we've done uh, participant observations, but how can the research methods that we employ actually help articulate the values? Whose values anyway? And I think that's important. The second question, of course, is um, I've also mentioned that uh, the environmental department is constantly trying to justify the existence and demonstrate value. So the question is how do we as researchers and them as practitioners, and is, is it really them and us, how do we actually collectively understand the value of what we're doing? And what, what do we do as researchers when the values are competing? Do we kind of um, uh, submit ourselves as just passive uh, recipients of what the informants are telling us? I'm not sure. And the question, of course, is what else can we do then? In our research, we have certainly uh, profited, if you like, uh, from understanding the pluralistic nature of values of social responsibility in the airport. We've also looked at how agendas become legitimised. Can we do more than just that? I'm not sure. And finally, what about the time dimension? How do we perceive and resolve the whole issue of future value right now? So I hope I left you with some questions to kind of think about, and that's, that's all I have. Thank you.